Welcome to Cracking Open. I'm Jason Heiner with my colleague Bill Detweiler back again to crack open some of your favorite tech. Uh, we not only do the latest tech, sometimes we do a little bit of retro tech, and this time we're doing new tech and retro. That's tech. right. We're going to do. So what are we get a two for today? one here. That's right. So what we've got is we have an original Nintendo Inter. Entertainment system an NES yes. right here from the 80s if you grew up in the 80s um, Like Jason and I did you probably remember this you helped link save Princess Zelda you helped defeat King Bowser Double all dribble. Those, that's right double dribble all those fond memories uh, and Nintendo uh, in 2017 early 2017 came out with uh, a way for all of us uh, folks that remember the original NES um, who weren't using emulators uh, to relive <laughs> yeah. their glory days with the new original uh, NES Classic here. Yeah. And so we're going to take this apart and we're going to take the original uh, NES apart and we're going to compare the two. Excellent. So this is a crazy, crazy popular device. It has, uh, yes. Far more than Nintendo expected. Uh, they found that when they put this device out, they could not keep them in shelves and it was almost impossible to get a hold of one, right, Bill? Oh, it was, definitely. So we uh, originally, the one that we originally cracked open, uh, these sold for $59.99. Yeah. yeah, it was the Great retail price. price. With, Great price. With 30 games 30 games, that's in. right. Yeah, built into the, the little emulator here. Uh, now, you could get lucky sometimes, and you can still find these, I think, for about 60 bucks around, depending on who has uh, stock left uh, stock left but, from the original run. But we were talking even before we, we started this segment with some of our, our producers, and uh, we had people that waited in line for hours in, in the in night, people who could not get a hold of one. Yeah. Um, somehow, miraculously, one of the producers got a hold of this one. We don't even know how. We don't <laughs> want to know. It was such a hit because people have such fond memories of this device. It was one of the first really great um, devices that you could play games for everybody. Yeah. Very easy to use. You probably remember the classic controller. This is the classic controller. It has a newer connector. It's the same kind of connector that you now see on the uh, Nintendo Wii, like the nunchuck. Uh, you, would, uh, you would use this, and this is the device. It's much smaller than the original connector you can oh, see yeah. there. And, uh, and then this also has an HDMI port right. on it so that you can connect it to a TV. A modern TV without um, using a modern TV. old converter. You don't have to use the old uh, you know, RCA connectors right, yeah. um, to connect it. Um, and so this really is now a modern little device. It 60 is. 60 bucks, 30 games. You can play your classics and your favorites. Lots of fun. Or if you watch our Apple HomePod uh, episode of Cracking Open, uh, that was a real chore cool. to take through. I think that you know, we ended up with an hour of footage on this. Does Dozens of screws. Yeah, yeah, dozens of screws. On this, you have four little Phillips screws right in the bottom um, underneath these rubber feet. You pop those out with like a Phillips double zero or triple zero screwdriver here, and the thing just separates so nicely, just Beautiful. like this. It comes right apart. Beautiful. And we get right into the guts Most uh, of our of cracking the opens don't go like don't, this. They don't go like this at all. So that's one of the things that makes this cracking open so much fun. We will see if... Uh, the original NES <laughs> is, that uh, is that easy to do. Now, but what we find inside the, um, uh, the NES Classic here, we find one single large uh, circuit board yeah. here. You find the connectors for the controller ports here. Yep. You find the power button contacts or um, other way around. You find the power button, the reset button contacts over here, the, um, and the connectors, uh, the connectors there. there. Yep. I was p pointing while holding it down and not being able to see. And that's kind of it. That's all there is in here. So it's if great. we take these little um, cables, yep. we disconnect them from the circuit board, we do that. And then we take our handy uh, Phillips screwdriver. Also, what's nice yeah. about this, all the screws are the same. You yes. don't need three or four different screwdrivers to take this thing apart. You don't see that in an iPhone no, these days. No, you don't see that in an iPhone. You don't see that in many devices these days. You'll need three or four different screwdrivers, specialized tools. Here, all we need to do is one sort of really small Phillips screwdriver. We're going to take the screws out from the inside. Very now, standard. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to remove the circuit board. What's really interesting when we when we start to look at the hardware here, we're going to we'll compare the original hardware to what uh, is inside the new NES Classic. And there's such a you know it's so interesting to see how technology oh has my progressed gosh. in 20 uh, years, in 30 20 years, 20 plus years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this really was late, is astonishing. This is a a late you know mid to late 1980s device, right? So mm -hmm. so it is 30 years ago. 
Um, this device, uh, 2017, um, was such a, a, a hot find. And we have heard that um, Nintendo is now going to make another run of yes. these. And so you will uh, be able to find it, hopefully much easier than last time. Uh, you'll be able to find this device again on the shelves for, for 60 bucks. Very hopefully, fun yeah. little device. And they sold, about, um, they sold over 2 million of the first run. Wow. So, I mean, it was, I think, it Great. far exceeded uh, Nintendo's expectations in popularity. And since then, they have the released the Super NES uh, Classic version. Yeah. Uh, and that one has also sold really well. So it's like we, the vinyl record of video yeah, games. That's right. So we removed uh, the single board here uh, from the NES Classic. I'm going to see if I can remove the metal uh, shielding that's on top of this. Yeah. Now, when I pried it off a little bit, what you do is you have a little bit of a thermal, um, sort of a thermal pad here yep. that helps dissipate the heat. Uh, from the processor on this, we'll set this down right this is here. It's kind of like a giant heat sink in one yeah, sense. It is. Um, it, it provides a little bit of uh, EMI, uh, electromagnetic interference, shielding on this, RF uh, shielding, and it also helps uh, dissipate heat uh, off of the, the processor as well. Very good. Now, what's really interesting, what we found is really cool about uh, the new NES Classic, beyond its just small size, yeah. right? is that this is basically a single board uh, computer that runs a Linux operating system. You know, it's, Beautiful. You didn't ex necessarily expect to find that inside of, of the device, but that was really interesting. It has a quad core ARM based, uh, it's a Cortex A7 okay. based processor. Um, it has 512 uh, megs of storage on this. It has uh, 256 uh, megs of RAM. And you can see some of the chips here. You can see the storage chips, the memory chip, the, the RAM chips. You can see the video processor um, up here. And then you can also see the uh, ARM uh, A7 processor there. Now, Bill, there's also a, a micro um, USB port on mm -hmm. here. What's that? Is that for power? Um, what is that for? Can you look? Can you hack that and load some of your own yeah. games on here? What can okay. you do? So because it is a Linux-based uh, operating system, um, that Yes, you can actually interface with the device using the USB port, and people have uh, figured out ways to load, say, up to 200 or so games on this. Ah, there's more way than more just storage the 30. than yeah. just the 30. Now, another thing that's really interesting as we uh, start to take the, um, the controller apart okay. um, to remember is there's 30 games on here. Now, yeah. there's a lot more games that were originally released for the NES. Sure. So those people that we were talking about that put the 200 games on there, you know, they're actually, you know, they've been around for years as ROMs on a PC or in other types of, uh, you know, if you wanted to play the games that way, you could download, you could, you could download them and, and, and use them. And then, you know, there's some gray area depending on your jurisdiction That's and true. all kinds of um, like things. if, you, but if yes. you owned the game, some people would, would, argue, would argue if, if I bought that the game, game and I owned that the game physical originally, copy, the you physical could copy. download it. Now, whether Nintendo or the yeah. publisher or the you know the developer would agree with you is a, that's you where know, the gray area. Yeah, that's where comes your gray in. area is. Like I owned um, Double Dribble, and so, so you know you, maybe you I would could feel, download the ROM. Yeah, maybe I would feel within my rights to download the ROM and use it since <laughs> I did pay for. Whether they would uh, agree it. with you is is another matter, but. What, it's a legal gray area yeah. that, that has not been decided by the courts yeah. uh, yet. Um, so what, um, one of the interesting things is that we read on the internet when we were originally doing our cracking open. I'm trying to remove just a little circuit board here for the, um, uh, the contact uh, for the uh, reset and the power button up front. We can see that. Was that <laughs> some people have claimed as they look at the ROMs that are on the games that what Nintendo actually did is they actually went out to the internet and they downloaded this little circuit board you can see. Reportedly. And reportedly, that they actually used the hacked ROMs that were available on the internet for the games that are on <laughs> the single board Linux computer. And now, that is not illegal for Nintendo to do that, right. even if they are the hacked ROMs, because Nintendo has a licensing deal and owns you know, has the rights it's, to do that. It's their intellectual it, it, property. Yeah, or, and you're, they or, have the deal or with licensing. the publishers. Right, they, yeah. so, whereas you and I, eh, we don't have that same kind of deal. We certainly couldn't download them and sell them. Yes, you know, yeah, yeah. We downloading don't have that, them and using that same them deal. 
if we owned the copy of the original, yeah. that's the gray maybe area. Maybe that's the gray maybe. area. So that's it. That's all there is to taking the uh, NES, oop, throwing Ooh. pieces all over the place. That's all there is to taking the NES Classic apart. It really is just a plastic housing, some ports, and a single board Linux computer. Super Mario Brothers and Zelda, of course, were the most popular games um, for this console. Uh, like it's, some of my favorites, Double Dribble, Tecmo <laughs> Baseball, weren't on there. Tecmo Bowl, though, the football game, uh, was on there. And um, we are in America, after all. Uh, so yeah, not soccer. Really. <laughs> so this, uh, this device, though, now you're digging into yeah. the original. What do you find in it? Are, are so, it still standard screws? So Yeah, so what we thought it would be really cool to do, like we were talking about, is do a little old and new here, right? Yeah. And so luckily, even on the original um, NES here, uh, they do have... Um, Phillips regular heads? Phillips head screws here. So we're going to keep taking these apart. I mean, they're a little larger. Uh, well, they're a sure, lot larger. A lot larger. Um, you can kind of see, I don't know, the difference in size, right? This is really kind of small, but you can kind of see the difference in size of the, uh, the the screws for the old NES and then the screws for the new one. Which is pretty um, typical cause since, yeah. you can, since you think that this is about a tenth of the volume and the mass, the, the new one of the original, right? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it is small. much, much uh, smaller. It shows the miniaturization of the technology in that is how far it's come in 30 years. Also, this didn't have any games, if I remember right, built into the console no, itself. No storage. You had to use a cartridge. That was where the actual storage um, was. So it, it is kind of fun to do well, something and, and like this. Well, and a lot of them, I mean, the games were stored on the cartridge, yeah. and, and there was no, you know, until really like like Zelda came out, right? Yeah. There was no actual way to save a game, right? You know, Zelda and those cartridges had a battery in the yeah, cartridge that yeah, actually yeah. powered um, powered the, the the storage, the memory inside the cartridge. This device was um, was quite a breakthrough at the time. This was multiple hundred dollar device at the time, yeah. right? So it is also, and these games were, uh, you know, 20 bucks typically, 15, 20 bucks uh, at least. So uh, you're also talking about, you know, the the economies of scale of this, you know, since then. Uh, so not only is the device, but you're talking probably, you know, hundreds of dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars worth of, um, you know, games and console that from this uh, to that. There goes all the screws. There goes all the screws. So just like the, you know, just like the original one, this one, the, uh, or just like the classic, the NES classic, the original uh, NES comes apart, you know, it's a clamshell, yeah. two pieces there, I took it apart upside down uh, because of the screws, we'll set this Look over here. Look at all the room to take the <laughs> cartridge, right? Yeah, this Most is, of it is the room for the cartridge. Yeah, these old 72-pin uh, uh, cartridges here, um, you know, took up a lot of space because, like, you know, again, it's 1980s technology. Yep. Or even earlier, you know, there were several iterations of the, um, of the original NES, it was released in different configurations uh, in the U.S., in Japan, sure. And so, you know, it was kind of a an evolution. Uh, there were even, you know, if, if anyone who had one of these remembers the old uh, blowing on the cartridge technique, because oh, yeah. the, the the pins would get the contacts uh, would get warm, would get dirty, or they get warm out, or you'd take a cotton yeah. swab and alcohol or something to try to clean them off. Or Forgot about that. You put the cartridge shove in, them in real hard. You and get a bunch of like weird lines. Times. Yeah, you pushing it down to make it go, and <laughs> so then you oh, pull man. it out, so and then uh, pop it back in. So as people started to actually, you know, sort of. Um, as they became more popular in retro gaming, there were actually modification kits that you could buy for these to fix those 72-pin ah. you know, cartridge yeah. problems, right? Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could, so you could hack this device? Uh, well, there, there were yeah, hacks yeah. that came well, out for this device? there were repairs, so we say. <laughs> you know, ways to uh, nice. fix the problems with the original design. You also sure. see these massive capacitors, these caps that are over here yeah. we, around the power supplies, around the, um, the video outputs. You don't see any of that in the new devices, right? It's a just lot a of, single board computer in the new one. Yep, there's a lot of wires in here too, A lot too, of wires. Right? So, one of our producers actually brought this in and let us graciously take it apart. We're gonna put it back together in working order for it. Um, he must have an immaculately clean house. Uh, because there's, there's no, very little very dust, little in, dust there. in there. So and we're he said this device still works, unlike his Nintendo Wii, for example, <laughs> that uh, it doesn't um, isn't fully functional. So it is interesting to see how some of the old tech, mm -hmm. uh, you know, was built with a little bit more uh, sense of sort of ruggedness and meant to last. We see that over and over again. You know, very much the technology today and of the last few years is far, far more disposable. It's actually my Wii. 
Uh, <laughs> the, Wii the Wii U, U. that is, is now malfunctioning, we just heard, not the Wii. So uh, even newer technology. Uh, so this 30-year-old device, though, still working. Uh, so pretty impressive. Yeah, what I want to do is we're going to try and take the um, cartridge uh, the cartridge holder here um, off of the connector here, off of the motherboard, so we can see the main circuit board underneath, and we can see the size of some of the chips underneath. That's really what we want to do. And then hold that up and compare that uh, to the single board computer that runs uh, the new NES Classic. This one we'll try to get back together. So Stephen Beecham actually has a working Nintendo at the end of this. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for letting us crack this thing open. Sometimes these devices have technology in them that isn't enabled yet, but it tells you something about future features that might um, be in the devices, as well as um, you know maybe future iter iterations of the device that might have um, new features. So we learn a lot of interesting things. We've been doing these, Bill, for over a dozen years. As a matter of fact, 2006, you cracked open the Xbox uh, 360. Mm -hmm. um, and so we found a lot of interesting things from that and far more people were interested than we expected. And so because of that, um, we also cracked open an iPod. And then since then we've done, you know, almost dozens all the biggest dozens, technologies. Yeah. If you want to look back at some of that tech that's been cracked open in the past, you can go to techrepublic.com and you can see the galleries. You can go to cnet.com where we have a lot of the videos. All, all right, Bill, so we tell finally got uh, the circuit board out of the uh, original uh, Nintendo Entertainment System here. Uh, you know, we have the, all the, the video output and the power input and everything over here. And then you can see the size of the silicon on this yeah. board, right? Compared to yeah. this. Amazing. I mean, it's amazing that you don't <laughs> even have a single game on here, right? It just basically yeah. runs the operating system, the video, the video output code, that's it. Everything, all the game code is on there. Now compared to this, yeah. so from what we've been able, you know, the getting details on this is a little circumspect, but sure. what we found is it has a 1.7 megahertz processor, what you would call a <laughs> processor on it. Um, and then it has, I think, 16 kilobits or two kilobytes of video memory on this wow. thing. And the same in what we would call RAM, like yeah. uh, 16 kilobytes of RAM and or two kilo or 16 kilobits, two kilobytes of, of RAM on this thing compared to this, right, that has yeah. 512 megabytes Amazing. of storage and a, um, a quad core processor, and I think 256 um, megs of RAM. So it's, so it's a lot more power in a much smaller package because yeah. you know, that's what you get, 30 years of tech, it's right? true. And so you think about this, basically like a one to two megahertz processor. Yeah, right? that's it, at 1.7 megahertz, that's all you get. Now at the time- Old eight bit video games, man. So at the time, this is a pretty breakthrough device that they can sell this this cheaply and mm. have what was really great graphics at the time too. We look back and laugh at it now. It's eight bit and it's it's funny looking, it, it, it but people a, still enjoy oh, yeah. it. And it was it was a, uh, a little bit better than my old uh, Commodore sixty four or Atari twenty six hundred. You know, still this was fantastic. You know, it, it, tons of fond memories. So there you have it, the old and the new. Um, this device will be coming back again for 60 bucks, 30 games, and a lot of retro memories. That's so pretty cheap for retro memories, That right? really is, it really is. Uh, lots of great stuff there. So uh, you can go to techrepublic.com for more cracking opens, more photos of cracking opens. You can go to CNET for more video uh, of all the cracking opens that we've done um, in the past. And what would you like to see us crack open next? Leave us a note in the comments and we'll take a look because we're always looking for the best old and new stuff to crack open. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.